And I'm back. So it's been quite a while since I posted anything uh, on YouTube. And the reason why is because I moved to Hawaii. And I'm going to be talking while I work on this painting. And you can probably see that even my video setup is very different because I'm working on a 6x12 canvas, which is a 1x2 ratio. Um, and what I... And what I've been doing lately has been lots and lots of landscapes. Uh, even though I moved to Hawaii and it was a huge upheaval and everything um, related to my life and all that is very difficult. It was basically like moving to another country. Even though it was so difficult, um, I was still getting my artwork done every single day. And I guess, I guess what I want to do with this video, besides show you the process for this painting that I'm working on, is talk to you, or at least help you, as much as I can on how to continue to create, continue with an art practice when there is such a big upheaval in your life. Because... It's really, actually, it's not really a when anymore, or it's not an if, it is a when. Like, it's going to happen. Things will happen in your life. Either, um, you know, it could be socially related, uh, you know, significant other, family, um, you know, pets, you know, anything that just really just knocks you on your butt. And you don't feel like doing anything because, well, practically your time is taken up with just surviving, just doing things, just normal stuff throughout the day. Like trying to move to Hawaii was a huge, huge move for us. Uh, um, and we've moved across the United States from the East Coast to the West Coast. We've did that before. And that was so much easier than moving to Hawaii. I think the main reason why is because we, you know, we had, we had pets we brought with us, which mean a tremendous amount to us. So we had to get all that paperwork together and then make sure that they were transported with as much comfort uh, as possible and not have any kind of extended stay in quarantine because that's a thing out here no rabies you know it's kind of crazy uh, and then moving all of our stuff oh my gosh it costs so much to move you know a full house of stuff like all of my setup and everything that's why it's taken me so long i mean we've been we've been in hawaii since um mid-july and right now it's mid-September, so two months. I mean, I didn't want to touch any of this stuff because I was busy just getting back to my art groove, you know, stacking one thing at a time. But anyway, so it was really tough for me. Okay, so what can I bring to the table for you? What kind of value can I bring for you? How can my, my experience uh, help you to continue your artistic practice? And honestly, it's... The essential aspect of this is something I've talked about all the time. You know, I continue to talk about to every other artist out there that is having issues with continuing their uh, daily practice or any practice at all. And that's to have a minimum. Have a very small... Oh, that... It's already off from the line that I created, but that's okay. Um, have a very small practice that you do every day. For me, it's just 30 minutes a day. It's very simple to get to. No other quote unquote rules besides that. I just need to do 30 minutes of art every single day. And if you look at my website, chrisbevan.com, 
you can still see all those days that where I was doing just very simple, like two by two drawings. I mean, these were little tiny drawings. I mean, this is, this is two inches here. So little squares, right? Doing a bunch of these little squares, making it as simple as possible, just so I could get uh, my art time in. And it's not just about the art time. It's not just about you know, oh, I got to really get it in. Although I felt like that a lot of those days because there was so much going on, um, you know, having migraines and stress and all kinds of craziness, you know, a day of flying, <laughs> you know, everything that, that goes in with just crazy life. But so there are some days when the 30 minutes was just a chore to get to. But what I found over the 10 and a half years of doing art every single day, I think I'm at 3,880 something days now. Um, over all that time, if I can get in 30 minutes every day, if I can continue to work my brain and to continue to think about art in some way, some simple, easy way, it really compounds. It's like compounding interest, right? You've probably heard of the penny exercise where you, someone asks you, or let, let's say a very affluent individual comes up to you and they say, hey, I'm gonna give you a penny. And I, or no, I'm gonna give you a million dollars, or I'm gonna give you a penny today and for every day of the month, I'm gonna double it, okay? So on for the penny on the first day, you would get one cent. On the second day, you get two. On the third day, you get four. On the fifth day, you get eight. You know, so continually to, to double that. And, you know, it's a, obviously a trick question. The correct answer is you go with the penny and you also tell them to pay you on the the longest month of the year, not February. <laughs> because by the time you hit 30 days, I think you're up to about two and a half million dollars or something like that, you know, from the penny doubling. Um, and I think if you pick the longest day, it's, well, maybe it's more than that. I know at some point it gets up to $10 million. So, but that's that's how the 30 minutes of day, a day of, of art, really compounds. I mean, it's not exactly, right? I mean, because we're talking about two different things. We're talking about money and we're talking about, you know, the subjective motivation that we all have to do a subjective act of art making. So it's not exactly, but I tell you what, over those years, the compounding is there. And the only reason why I'm continually doing art and I didn't have months and months of off time, like many of the artists that I talk to, is because I've set that minimum and I do it every day. Um, and I do it every day no matter what. It's not only compound, I mean, one of the ways to look at it is this. You look at it as a production schedule. So if you look at it like, oh, I need to get a painting done. I need to get a bunch of painting done, paintings done, or a multitude of paintings done. If you look at it like a production schedule, it's, it works within that, yes. It's, uh, you will get artwork done, definitely. But the best way to look at this is motivation. The best way to look at this is with inside of what, what is happening within your brain. Um, what happens within your habits and your willpower. For example, it's so easy for me to pick up my art and do it every single day, even when moving to Hawaii, 
because I've been doing it for so long that the willpower has compounded. Like if I don't feel like it, that's nothing. I mean, like whatever. Of course I don't feel like it. You know, it doesn't. I, there's lots of days I don't feel like it, even if I'm sick or whatever. I get my art done because there's been so many days that I've been sick that I've done my art and I've built up willpower. If I've, d if I've done it then, I can do it now. And I've done it over and over and over again. And so the more that you have this daily habit of art, you're building up that willpower. And you're doing it on the easy days. You're doing it on the hard days. You're doing it on the mediocre days. You're doing it every day. And you're doing it on the really, really hard days. And those are the best days. And you're like, what, what are you talking about? What do you mean they're the best days? It's a really hard day. Like the best day for my, or days for my daily art practice, the most powerful days that give me the most motivation, the most uh, willpower, the most habit building awesomeness are the days that I was in um, the hospital for a kidney transplant and I still got my artwork done. And you're like, holy shit, why, why is that the best? Why is that super hard? Or those super hard days the best for you? It's because I accomplished something huge. Yeah, you know, huge for me. It's, you know, I didn't like go to the moon or anything like Neil Armstrong at 36, by the way. Jeez, can you imagine that? Being on the moon at 36, I'm 48 now. Neil Armstrong did that 10 years before my, my current age. Anyway, sidetrack. But it was huge for me. And so any day that I look at, you know, my artwork, oh, I need to get my 30 minutes done. I really don't feel like it. I think back on that day or those days when I was in the hospital bed and it was very difficult. But I got my sketchbook, I did some crappy sketches, just terrible sketches that I ended up having framed afterwards because they were so important to me. Um, and from now on, I look at that and I go, wow, okay, if I did it that day, on the days where I just don't feel like it, or that I'm moving, or I just have a bunch to do, or, you know, time, time doesn't get in the way anymore. Time isn't a big deal. Because after this long of doing it, heck, after a few months of doing it, you start programming it within your day. It's like, okay, well, if I want to really do this, if I'm really into this daily art thing, I know I'm not messing around. You know, there's, there's things that we, we schedule throughout our day, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, your job, uh, time with your significant other. You know, time to go to the bathroom, time to sleep, time to play video games, time to do whatever you program throughout your day. But once you get serious with something like this, all of a sudden you start programming, you start uh, setting aside time for your artwork because it's so important at that point. You've made a commitment and you're like, you know what, I'm 100% in, there's no going back. I'm doing this. So let's put it on the calendar every single day, maybe a reminder, do some 30 minutes of artwork. This is not random. Like, what am I going to do today? No, you pick out the perfect times throughout the day for you to get your artwork done. For most people, that's, you know, the best time is like in the morning, you know, as soon as possible. Although I've moved to Hawaii now and I have to do my artwork after everything after my job, because I work on a, the, the central time zone. So I'm up at 4 a.m. in the morning, well, 3.30, so I can be to work at 4 a.m. And I, I do my artwork, like right now, it's 1.20, 1.30 here in Hawaii. Um, and so I have to do it later in the day, but I program it, you know, I figure out, okay, when's the best time to do it? When is my motivation the highest? When can I set aside some time today? I'll look at my calendar uh, throughout the whole week 
and I'll say, oh, well, I have a doctor's appointment this day. You know, uh, my wife and I are doing this on the weekend. So it's going to be a short art day on Saturday and Sunday are the days that she's off and we're going to do something together. So I'm intentionally making it shorter so I can spend time with uh, my wife, who is really important to me. But we program it. We schedule it. We schedule it like you would an appointment to a job interview or to something super important for yourself, right? You schedule it like you would put a doctor's appointment on the calendar. This is my important um, medical, like, I guess, uh, mental appointment to myself, right? Like if I had a, uh, an appointment to a psychologist, right? This would be the same thing. This is my psychology appointment for today. This is my healthy act for myself today. You know, it, it depends on, you know, how you want to frame it, but you can frame it any way you like. If you know that sitting down painting, doing a landscape, you feel the most one with yourself and your true identity or who you are, or you're the most calm at that point, or at so you know, at this point you, you, you've done art and maybe you have some anxiety and you know that uh, painting or sculpture or ceramics, uh, you know, making pots, getting your hands dirty with clay. I mean, it's extremely um, cathartic for lots of individuals. So if, if that's your art time, which it's mine as well, like I, my day is fantastic when I'm able to create. And it's even better when I create something I enjoy, which doesn't happen all the time. But we make an appointment to ourselves, our appointment to, for our artwork, uh, as important as if we were making an appointment to a very, um, in, you know, important medical procedure or something like that, right? So the daily art thing, I can't really talk about it enough. <laughs> it's so big for me. And I, I would like for it to be a really important part for you as well, important part of your day. Because here I am, again, challenged through these 10 years, challenged in a very different way, ways that I never even thought of, right? When I began my journey in 2013, I didn't know that I was going to need a kidney transplant in 2018. But I got really practical with it and I said, you know, if I'm going to do art every single day for the rest of my life, uh, it needs to be practical. I can't sit down here and create this a huge painting every day, right? If you look at the daily paintworks with Carol Marine and a lot of the daily paintworks crowd up, out there, there's a lot of them that create paintings daily. And I was doing that for a while. And one of the ways that they do it is they paint little small paintings, like little six by sixes or four by fours or, or whatever. But that kind of equates to a time frame. You know, it, uh, you change the size of the painting so that you can get it done within, you know, X amount of time. So when I made this commitment, my practical choice was just to base it in time and not to base it in production. Because if you say, I'm going to create a painting every day, uh, I'm sorry, but you'll probably go, you know, hopefully you can get a month in without something completely blowing up or your motivation completely dying or, um, you know, the cats having to go to the hospital or you having to go to the hospital something will happen and it will knock you off that schedule because that's that's what life is it's a series of challenges that will always you know upset your perfect plans so set it to a minimum that you can do every day that you're comfortable with it doesn't have to be 30 it could be 20 it could be 15 it could be 10 10 minutes every day think of the compoundedness on that like i started when i was oh heck Ten, well, 
ten and a half years ago, so 38, right? Uh, so I was 38 at the time. And I, I can't imagine what would have happened. Uh, the, the progress that I would have achieved if I was 28 or 18 and I started this practice. It's kind of like, uh, have you heard, well, I remember back in the day when I was young, uh, younger, <laughs> I'm still young to most, uh, thinking about you, Doug. Um, there was many individuals that would tell me, hey, yeah, if, if uh, you know, at 20 years old, if you put away in the bank X amount of dollars a week, by the time you're 40, you'll be a millionaire. You know, this, these kind of things, right? Um, like that compounding that I was talking about before. It seems like it's always equates perfectly to money because that's something that we value. If I valued my art time as much as I do now, when I was 18 or 28, I don't know how far I would be. I. I I could say with almost just perfect certainty that I would have been in a gallery represented and probably doing nothing but art every day because that's how I would make my money. Be completely supported as an artist, right? If I just continue to do that, just, you know, a daily art practice. And my skill set would be just through the roof, right? Just the, your ability grows through practice. How do you get better at anything, including artwork? Practice. It's no different. It is no different. I think, I think a lot of you understand, and maybe you know this, but when you show your artwork to someone and they say, oh, you're so talented. So it's a wonderful compliment because what they're telling you is they're telling you your painting is amazing your drawing's amazing you're really good but you and i know as artists that you started out okay right you started out with some skill with some talent but it's the hard work it's the effort it's the time that you put into it the continued effort over weeks, months, years, that's where true skill comes in. That's where you take your work from merely just being talented to someone buying it or a multitude of individuals buying it or a gallery putting you up on, you know, in their, in their gallery for, um, you know, years and years, that kind of thing. And this is what daily art does for you. It's, you know, setting that minimum and committing to it. It allows you to continue that, to continue that progress no matter what. Because you've set aside the time, you have your minimum set, you know what you need to do, you understand uh, what you need to do on those really hard days, right? Because you know they're going to come, something's going to happen, right? Um, it's like uh, most people talk about getting old and, and you know, they, there's two guarantees in life, uh, death and taxes, right? I think there's three that people forget about. And this is a bit negative, but it's, it's a little bit of a motivator as well. There's, there's three definite things in life. Death is one of them. Taxes, yes, or, or another. But... The third one is the decrease of your health over time. Because eventually you will die. It's inevitable as, you know, the sun coming up or the rotation of the earth. You will die. I will die. We all do. It's part of life, right? We can't have life without death. But not waiting Till you're retired, not waiting till something happens uh, so you can actually just get started, you know? Oh, I'm going to wait till, you know, 
after the baby is about a certain age, you know. Um, I'm going to wait until, you know, I get out of college. Uh, I'm going to wait until, you know, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable at my job, you know, and I got some extra time. I'm going to wait until this. I'm going to wait until that. Whatever your excuse is. And let me tell you, when you start reframing life and instead of just thinking about death and taxes, but the degradation of your health as you get older, you realize that I don't have as much time as I think because it isn't just cut off in an instant, like the one day that you are no longer here. It's the days when, you know, like Monet, who just about lost his eyesight or Georgia O'Keeffe, who lost her eyesight at, you know, 80 years old, right? Um, and, and was still working, by the way. Uh, she moved to ceramics, made some beautiful pots. My goodness, can you imagine? Just absolutely, just the strength of that woman is, is uh, she was beyond anything. A hero, that's what she was. Um, a hero of the art world. So that's another thing that daily art helps you with, you know, committing to a minimum daily. So what can you do? You know, stop, you know, stop listening to me rant to you about how important this is and trying to convince to you how important this is and then think about it. Just, you know, wherever you're at, just stop what you're doing, you know, stop the multitasking, probably on your phone like I am all the time and watching a video and listening to someone talk to you in the background, you know, so stop what you're doing and just think, what, what could I do every single day? Some minimum thing that's like, yeah, that's easy. Like literally you say, that's easy. I could do that every day. Maybe it is 30 minutes. Maybe you're listening to me and you're like, like most people say that I've heard when I tell them this, yeah, that's easy. I could do 30 minutes a day, but that's not going to amount to anything. Those same people that have told me that in the past haven't done anything in six months, a year. And if they had just continued with that simple little, that's so easy for the past six months, they would have had multiple paintings completed, lots of willpower built up, and possibly even looking at galleries or something to sell their work. Maybe they have people looking at their work at that point if they would have done that. So what can you do? What little bit can you do daily that uh, just feels so stupid easy that it just feels ridiculous to even do it? 10 minutes of sketching. That's the easiest for me, you know. I don't even have to sharpen a pencil. I get one of those mechanical pencils. And I got a sketchbook that's always ready. It's sitting right over there. Um, maybe work is really tough. Maybe I've moved to Hawaii and just it's crazy everywhere uh, or whatever. And I just sit down and I sketch something. I make up a two by two little square and I do three or four of those and I watch the time until it hits 30 minutes because I don't feel like doing it. And then I say, okay, that's my 30 minutes for the day. I celebrate that I actually got it done even though I didn't feel like it. Celebration is really important, by the way. And then I'm done for the day. Super easy. Super easy. Like stupid easy. Just, of course I can do that. That's nothing. What does it amount to? Well, the reason why I have my website the way it is, because the other commitment that I made when I committed to doing art every day for the rest of my life, I felt that it was a huge commitment to make. And I had, yes, visions of grandeur, right? Within, and I was thinking, within five years, I can get 10,000 hours of art. Well, yeah, that didn't happen. I'm still not up to 10,000 hours because I track it all on my website. So when you ask, what is what can 30 minutes do for you a day because it seems like nothing? Go to my website, chrisbevan.com. I have logged every single stupid day and some of the great days too, <laughs> right? And you can see my progress. 
you can see my very first painting that I made ten and a half years ago. Of course, I shall put a caveat on this because I was an artist before then, but I was out of it for five, over five years before I went back in because I had done the same thing as a lot of other artists. You know, if I couldn't paint eight hours a day, it wasn't worth it. That turned into five years of nothing. And art is not like riding a bike. Even riding a bike is not like riding a bike. You know that saying, right? Where riding a bike is supposed to be easy once you learn it, you know it for forever. Art isn't like that. Art is complex. Painting, drawing, whatever. And you lose ability the longer you don't do it. It's a, it's a complex act. It's, it's like if you watch sports, I don't really watch sports, but the analogy here is very exact. If you had um, a player that was at the top of their game and then they take a whole season off or two seasons off, right? And they don't even train. Would you expect them to come back to the game as good as they were? Uh, the previous two seasons ago? Well, no. Of course not. Because they have to practice. Actually, and the best athletes are the ones that practice, guess what? Daily. Every single day. Weekends included. Those are the best athletes. It compounds. And it's really, really important. So check out my website. Look at um, look at where I started. I pretty much forgot the reason why I was telling you that. Well, it's because I had this five years off, right? And then I went back to it um, in 2013. I just, you know, that's where I decided I'm going to do artwork, uh, of, you know, the rest of my life. And the reason why I, des I saw, I decided that was mainly I saw the degradation of my skill. I was a much better artist five years prior and I had lost it all. Uh, I mean, it was like losing, it felt like losing a limb or something. Here I had all of this, all this time and effort and all of this skill that I had built up over the years and just five years away from it, for whatever reason, just, you know, life gets in the way. And I'd lost it. And I said, oh, never, ever again. I'm doing art every single day for the rest of my life now. I don't want, it, I don't want that to happen again. I don't want that to happen to you. So if you're sitting there and you listen to me and you're like, maybe I'll think about this. Or maybe this is ridiculous. Or maybe you're thinking, you know what? I haven't done artwork in several years or several months or several weeks. It doesn't take anything to pick up a pencil. Doesn't matter what type. Don't get all caught up in the materials doesn't take anything to pick up a pencil, a pen, any writing material. Heck, everybody has pens laying around, right? Just pick it up, find a piece of paper. Doesn't need to be specific. Doesn't need to be art worthy. The back of an envelope. Start sketching. Do something, right? And guess what? That's one day. You've been out of it for however long. Get a day in and then say, that was easy. I did my 15, my 30 minutes, my whatever. I can do that again tomorrow. And then track it. You don't have to track it as extensively as, as I do and have. The purpose for me to track it that crazy like is for you. It's partly it's for me, yeah, too, because I like to see the history. I like to see where I came from. It's motivation for me as well. 
when I can see uh, how I'm building skill, when I can see how many hours I've spent within the month or the week or the year compared to the previous year, you know, that's really motivating to me. I like the data from it. You don't have to track it crazy like that. The very, I mean, you could simply get out a 2023 calendar and then put a little X on the day. I got my 30 minutes done. And then start filling calendars. Celebrate when you reach a, a week done. Celebrate when you reach a month. Celebrate when you reach 100 days or 50 days or 90, whatever you want to celebrate. Celebrate every single day uh, because it's a piece of accomplishment. And the more you do it, especially in the days where you don't feel like doing it, those days get so easy, let me tell you. The more you do it, the, the days where you don't feel like doing it get so easy to do it. Like I, I'm at the point now, uh, because I've done this for over a decade, a decade and a half, that I can't even imagine not doing something. You know what? I just said that. And then I was thinking back, uh, I was thinking back of, with uh, when we were at our move and I'm in here in, in our apartment that we moved into and none of our stuff had arrived yet. And I'm on the floor and my laptop is propped up on boxes so that I could work, right? And I'm sitting on the floor. I'm uncomfortable. My butt hurts. And I don't feel like doing anything. And that was for days and days. I just didn't feel like doing anything. Um, and I, I just said that it comes easy to me. You know what? There's, there's times like then when uh, I'll take that back. It did not come easy then. I was reminded of those days when I just didn't feel like it. And I was like, oh, wow. Welcome back. I, I haven't felt you in forever. Yeah, this, this, this feeling of, I just do not feel like this. So the majority of days have gotten easy, but a move to Hawaii will get me right back into that mode of, holy cow, this is uh, just picking up a pencil is difficult. But keep it easy and keep going. The, the reason why this is so effective for everyone is because it's not prescriptive. You come up with the parameters that you feel is right for you. And it's pretty easy. Time-based, anybody, you know, everybody does everything around time. But it doesn't have to be 30 minutes. If you think you can do hour an hour every single day, then go for it. You know, do that. If you think that you can do an hour every single day and then you get to um, a year of one hour of art every day and then a big life change comes in. Maybe you have your third child or your first child and you're like, wow, I just, I can't do that hour every day. Then reduce it. It's your rules for your life that you can make and no one can tell you, no, that's, that's not good enough. That's, it's up to you. It's totally up to you. But you have that ability. Reduce it all the way down to 10 minutes a day. Because you got a newborn or something. <laughs> and they only sleep X, X hours a day, right? And you're up at those crazy hours of the night. Trying to uh, just stay awake and be lucid, right? Uh, you know, never know what's going to happen. So you make up the rules. I like time, but it doesn't have to be time. Maybe you say, I'm going to do a little two by two painting or drawing every single day. If that's what motivates you and what you're like really interested in, then commit to that, right? At least this and whatever that is for you. I'm going to do every single day. So it's not prescriptive. You make up the rules for your life. And guess what? 
I know a lot of people would argue this point, but there are no rules in art anymore. No one can tell you, oh, this is a rule in art that you can never break. I watched a video of, uh, on YouTube uh, not too long ago, and it was about composition. This is a compositional rule that you can never break. It's the most important. It has to happen. Oh, boy. Yeah, I mean, I think that works if you're a representational artist all the time, right? And, you know, if that's a good rule for you, that's fine. You know, keep that rule for yourself. But don't push that onto other individuals, and no one should push their rules onto you. Because any artist that comes up with a rule like that, there's another artist that comes that does artwork, com you know, completely breaking the rule that just blows everyone out of the water, right? It's just beautiful, like beautiful, beautiful stuff. So you make up your own rules um, about your daily art practice and about what kind of art you do and how you do it. There are no rules in art anymore. Those were broken years and years ago. You don't have to paint a certain way. You don't have to paint a certain thing. You don't have to draw. You don't have to paint. You don't have to do whatever, you know? You don't even have to have art materials. <laughs> I've seen some of the most amazing art made out of different lengths of sticks that were glued to a panel. That just looked absolutely beautiful. I wish I could remember the name of that artist. Um, a really great channel that I love um, if you're stuck on the whole, no, art must be uh, representational and it's got to look like this and look like that, check out the channel Art21. So Art21, it stands for Art of the 21st Century. They've been doing videos for decades and decades uh, before they even put them on YouTube. But they have some of the most famous um, contemporary artists in the scene right now. And I will admit, a lot, you know, some of them, I look at their work and I'm like, I don't care for that. I don't like it at all. But guess what? Art is subjective. <laughs> uh, but there's others that just, like, my mouth is just agape looking at what they're doing, going, I can't believe that's just sticks. It is so beautiful. How is that so beautiful? You know, they just blow me out of the water, right? <laughs> And that, you know, the reason why art, there's no rules in art any longer is because it's subjective. Think about it. If, if the outcome of a football game or a baseball game or a soccer game, or I'm sorry, uh, European football or American football, um, if it was subjective, there would be no rules. You don't need rules. So it's subjective. I mean, it's it's like when kids play, right? They make up the rules as they go. And it's a lot of fun that way. <laughs> Except when they make up the rules just to win <laughs> against other people, right? Then it's like, no, you can't make up those rules like that. But there there is no rules in art because the outcome is always subjective, 100%. You could make paintings that fly off the shelves because you found your audience but there's a whole segment of the earth of people that are just like i hate that person's art it's terrible <laughs> right and it's still good it's still fantastic because there's no rules you know there's no rules anymore You could even say that, well, Chris, you're trying to get me to make a rule for myself to do daily art. I must do this every single day the rest of my life. You know, haha, -ha, back at you. I guess, I guess you could, um, yeah, I could totally see that. So let's, let's 
if you if you want to say there's no rules, if you want to sit there and say, okay, I want to be an artist, but I don't want to do any art, or I don't want to make these rules around it, or you know, I don't want to actually work, or maybe I don't even want to make work, you know, maybe it's all in my head. There you go. So your art is always, you know, thought. You didn't create anything. I like what um, Rick Rubin says in his book, uh, The Creative Act. Uh, it's a fantastic book, by the way. If, oh, for I recommend that for every single creator on the planet. Not just for music or painting or drawing, just everybody that is creative. Or exactly what Rick Rubin says, everybody is an artist. We're all creative. We're all creating. Even if you create in your head a new route to work, you know, or something like that, you've created it. It doesn't have to be shared. It doesn't have to be special. It doesn't have to be monetary. It doesn't even have to be physical. Maybe your art is thought. So sit there for X minutes a day and think about something. <laughs> I'm getting way off of the deep end of this, right? But for me, it's important that I create something. And heck, with digital nowadays, it doesn't have to be physical. Pick up your iPad. Uh, pick up whatever tablet you have and do something. Do little sketches, right? Do little doodles. It doesn't even have to be um, right out of your head. Get a coloring book because you love coloring books. They have a lot of adult coloring books now, which are fantastic. Adult meaning for older individuals, not the other meaning of that word. You know, for, for, uh, not for kids, basically. Oh, well, that doesn't help either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Very complex um, coloring books. Get a coloring book and just color. Just have fun. Have fun every day with something creative. 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever you choose. Make up the rules. Make up your rules and commit to it. That's my rule. Create something, please, and commit to it. That's, that's the only thing that I'm going to say. That's the only stipulation. Whatever you decide... Make a commitment and stick to it. Make a habit of it. Because that's really all a commitment is, is building a habit, keeping yourself to it, and saying, yeah, I'm going to continue doing this. At this point, you're probably saying, wow, he's talked a lot about one aspect this daily art thing can you chris can you go for you know two hours with this can you bore us to death <laughs> I'm, I'm sure i could i'm sure i could but let's let's change tack here for a bit let's focus on what i'm doing just for a little bit here and why i'm doing it because you might want to know Maybe you're liking what I'm doing. Maybe you hate what I'm doing. <laughs> and you want to know how to avoid it, right? Uh, or what I'm painting. But I'll give you some information. Um, so on my palette, uh, oil paint, that's number one. So I'm working on oil, or working with oil, and I'm working on a panel. This is a six by 12, seven eighth inch thick panel from uh, Blick Art. Um, they, this, these cost. well, if you get shipped to Hawaii, you get to, you have to pay for shipping. <laughs> I don't get free shipping. That sucks. Uh, Hawaii is expensive too. My goodness, is it expensive? Jeez. Um, but with shipping, it was like, uh, I ordered 15 of them. I think it was like 40 bucks shipping. I think on average, I'll probably end up paying uh, about $7 for each one of these panels. Six by 12, a little small thing. I mean, it's not big. Look at my hand against this. I don't have big hands I, either. Um, 
and I, I'm enjoying painting these little small paintings right now because I can complete them um, in about two days of work average if, unless I have something else going on throughout the week. But um, And I love the panels. Why do I love the panels? Uh, I'm using, well, it's the texture really. That's why I love the panels. The texture is really important to me. And um, so I like a really smooth texture so that every little stroke that I put on this panel uh, shows up without the texture of a canvas getting in the way. If you, I've probably painted on canvas before, but if you paint on canvas, you, you really get canvas texture all over the place. Um, and if you're trying to do really small detailed work, like maybe these little tiny figures, which are as big as a fingernail, um, having really thick canvas texture, you, I mean, there's no detail there. It just turns into a blur or um, into a texture of canvas. There's, it doesn't really look like much at that point. So that's why I like uh, the really smooth panels. They're easy to gesso. I did a black gesso so I could do the black on the sides all in one and then a gray on top, a neutral gray, and then I sanded it. Worked out well, works out really well. And if you're painting really small, by the way, you want to have um, a surface that is smooth. If you're painting small and you have very grainy texture, that's all that anybody will see will be the grain of your canvas. Okay, so if you're painting small, try and paint as smooth as possible or paint on something as smooth as possible. Years ago, I used to paint on paper. It was really inexpensive. Um, and you can paint on paper. You just have to gesso both sides, like a, like a arches watercolor paper, you know, something like 300 G GSM or, no, oh, actually, I can't remember the GSM on them, but uh, really thick paper. If you paint on that, gesso each side, um, they stack really nice. But remember uh, this, that if, if you paint on paper of any type, um, it's always best to eventually mount that to a panel of some sort, like um, a birch panel or something, which is kind of an extra step and a bit of a pain, honestly. Uh, mount it on a birch panel. And then you would have to put it behind glass, honestly, because paper should always be behind glass, even though it's gessoed and covered in oil paint. But it's also a very smooth texture. You get the hot press um, uh, paper, and it's super smooth. Cold press has a lot of texture to it, but you'd have to get the hot press paper if you want really smooth texture. So that that's something I do. So here I am on the panel. Um, and also with that, the texture of your panel depends, really dictates what kind of brushes you use. So I'm using these uh, Monarch br brushes from Windsor Newton. I love them because they're synthetic. They're not messing with any animals. Um, I don't like real animal stuff. I get all synthetics, except for really cheap hog hair brushes, which that I've had for years and years. But uh, these are usually finishing brushes because they're so kind of um, soft. Uh, these work somewhat on a textured, like a canvas texture panel or canvas, but really you would want a much rougher brush, like a hog's hair bristle. bristle. So if you're painting on a smooth um, surface like I am, I would suggest not using hog's hair because you'll dig into the paint. Like if I try and, uh, if I had a hog's hair and I'm trying to layer paint on top of uh, other paint, it's easy to scrape off because it's so, um, those brushes are, are so uh, stiff and rough. Yeah, stiff and rough. But if you're painting on really textured canvas with a very thick weave, by all means, go with a hog's hair and put on some really thick paint. You know, that's that's the good thing is about a hog's hair brush is they'll put on a bunch of really good paint, like just impasto everywhere. I don't do a lot of impasto. I could still do that with these brushes if I wanted to, but I keep it smooth, especially the very first uh, layers. I'm keeping it super smooth because it's also hot here in Hawaii and very humid. Um, and the good thing about that is 
even in my little room here, my smaller office, I went to I, a downgraded to a very small office um, because it's so expensive. Uh, with it being really hot, these uh, the oil dries a lot faster. Much, much faster. You know, and as I'm looking at the video and I actually have colors on my canvas, one thing I'm noticing is that the ISO is way too high. Let's see. It's going to get dark for a moment. Don't worry. I'll bring it back. Yeah. That is closer to what I'm seeing. Yeah, that's a bit more accurate. Look how uh, a bit closer to the, the image it is now. Before it was just all blown out. Well, that's my first day of resetting up. Anyway, okay, back to materials. So what am I using here? Um, all Gamblin. I use nothing but Gamblin paints. Why? Because you can find them at every single art store. Like, I came here to Hawaii. I've moved around every place for years. And every single art store carries Gamblin or Windsor Newton. You know, those two are like ubiquitous. They're everywhere. Um, that's one thing. And the paints are good. So they're good quality, just like Windsor Newton. Um, and they have all the colors that I need. So, and I like the mediums. All the mediums that they have is really, are really nice. So they have a, a nice choice of all of them. So Gamblin and then, uh, the, I won't go through all the paint colors I, I put on here because I don't use them all the time, but I'll, I'll go through the colors that, um, are kind of like staples on my palette. You know, something I put out every single painting session. So titanium white is a staple. There's none left. I need to put more out, but I'm just getting lazy. I'm just trying to scoop into that little bit of white left. And by the way, I mean, like most of the time when you paint it for these intense views, uh, if you want intensity of color, stay away from white. White will bring the intensity down. Uh, tremendously. So it's probably pretty good. So titanium white. This is transparent earth orange, which I love. I always put that out. I've been getting into phthalo blue. I like phthalo blue a lot. And then ultramarine blue and then cerulean blue, blue hue because it's a lot cheaper. Alizarin permanent. And then, oh, what is this red? That's quinacinrom magenta. And then Ah, Naphthol Scarlet, Cadmium Orange, I'm trying to use up all my cadmiums. I still have some orange left. Hansa Yellow Medium, and then these other ones, these four that you see here, these are, uh, these are some paints by Gambling called like Radiance, and it's basically, I thought they had something a bit extra to them, but they're basically a color like uh, the uh, naphthol, like the naphthol scarlet, but with white added. And I ended up buying them, and I was like, "Oh, well, I could just add white." So I'm trying to use those up as well. They're kind of like convenience colors. I don't have them on here all the time. It's nice to just quickly dip into a red that also has a white mixed into it, you know, or a pink or a purple or something. Or if you want a very high key painting, you can buy those colors and paint just everything is already saturated in white and super bright. Um, I was thinking about doing that one time. It'd be kind of fun. Super high key. But I never did that because I just love the contrast. I love these high contrast colors and values and everything. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm painting on. Um... And I think I'm I'm done for the day. Yeah, that was just about an hour. I've been yammering on for a whole hour. So back to the purpose of this video. I'm back um, to hopefully regular video posts. So, sorry, this one was so long. I figured it was probably overdue. 
Uh, the reason why uh, I haven't posted in forever is because we moved to Hawaii and it's taken a while for me to get things set up or the motivation to get things set up, but I'm back in the groove. Hopefully I continue to be back in the groove for a long time. And uh, yeah. And check out my website. I just redid my website, chrisbevan.com. I'll put it up on the screen. And look at my daily art. Hopefully, its purpose, the purpose of my website is to motivate you and to show proof that how powerful daily art practice really is. So use it for motivation. And if you go on it and you're like, this isn't motivating at all, let me know. Tell me why. Tell me what, yeah, in the comments below, why don't you comment? What are you going to be able to do today? What is your minimum? What can you do? Are you going to start a daily practice? Have you been away from it for forever and you just feel terrible inside because you know you're a creator? And maybe you'll try this. If that's you, please do it for, for me. Or for, No, actually, don't do it for me. Do it for yourself. Do it for something greater than yourself or, or me or anybody. Yeah. Yeah, just do it. Like Mikey. Like Nike. <laughs> just do it. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate you. Um, like, subscribe, but more important, go to my website, sign up for my newsletter. I'm actually going to get back to doing my newsletters very infrequently, maybe once a month, just telling you or trying to help you provide a lot of value to your life in some way. Thanks a lot. Have an absolutely fantastic week. Bye-bye.